All right, before we get started, we had a bunch of computer glitches yesterday, so if the show went up a little late, we apologize. But if you're watching this right now, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's fixed. So we're good, right guys? All right, Chrysler gives us something to be happy about. They've almost paid off half of their loan for one of their branches. All right. Uh, more details I'm sure you won't care about coming right up. Also news on a new Infiniti Coupe, and Land Rover brings us the goods we've asked for. The LRX just went into testing as a prototype. What's up everyone? I'm Derek D, and welcome to Fastlane Daily. It's hump day. Exclusively at autostream.com slash yoparts. Hey guys and girls, Fastlane Daily needs your help. We want your feedback on online shows just like ours. Go to this link here or click on the link in the description below and take the YouTube survey and let us know what you guys think. General Motors has announced last month that they successfully paid off their loans from the US government and now today Chrysler has announced they've paid off their loans, or rather half their loans. In a fanfare of press releases, Chrysler Holding, the current owner of Chrysler Financial, has proudly announced that $1.9 billion of the $4 billion lent to them has been repaid. The repayment is big news because the $2 billion lien against the financial arm has been lifted, meaning the company can do whatever it damn well wants with it now, whether expand it or wind it down. The reality of the situation is that Cerberus Capital Management, the owner of the Chrysler Group, still owes the U.S. government close to $5.7 billion and $1.7 billion to Canada. You know what? I, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just bored of this story. They're feeding us press releases about paying off a lien. I mean, this is ridiculous. Can we just play something cool? JF. All right, it, okay. Okay, instead of uh, talking about rich people who are staying rich, even though they're in massive amounts of debt, let's just watch this. Denn das Feuer ist gelöscht. Das war Ausgangs der des Grand Prix Kurses. Da war das Auto schon in Brand geraten. Jetzt müsste, kann man ja eigentlich im Moment erstmal nur so ein bisschen spekulieren, wo denn die Stelle war, wo man letztlich das Auto hat abgestellt oder abstellen musste. Schwedenkreuz. Ausgang Schwedenkreuz, Schwedenkreuz ja. vor der Arenbergkurve. Ja, und da geht die Fahrertüre schon auf, die ist ja in Fahrtrichtung rechts bei dem Lotus und äh, der Versuch des Fahrers herauszukommen im rollenden Tempo. Ich würde mal sagen, gute 50 km/h hat er noch ja. drauf gehabt. Und der knallt sogar noch mal in die Planke, ne? Ja klar, weil er raus wollte ja. aus dem Auto. Ja, ja. Ja, also ist aber alles gut, alles im grünen Bereich. Er hat sich mit einem beherzten Sprung dann tatsächlich rausretten können und das war allerletzte Sekunde. Ja, jetzt muss man dazu natürlich sagen, die Feuerweste Unterwäsche, die Feuerfesten Overalls, die halten zwar mittlerweile... Yes, I'd much rather watch a Lotus catching on fire than rich people burning through cash. Okay, now we'll get back to the news. Edmunds Inside Line has revealed that they have details and Nissan executives are neck deep in discussions to greenlight production of a coupe and convertible version of their M vehicle lineup. It's no shock that Infiniti wants to tap into the market that the Germans have created with the E-Class, 6 Series, and A5. Infiniti is working very hard to distinguish themselves as an international luxury brand. It was only this year that the company made the move from just being Nissan's US luxury brand to going global. The Essence concept further proved that point, and that car could shed some light on what an M Coupe would look like. Or rather, better look like the Essence concept or Infiniti were taken hostages. I don't even know how we go about taking hostages, nor would we actually do it, but we might watch back, okay? That's what I'm saying. And in today's internet rumor mill, autoblog.com has the first spy photos of the production version of the 2011 Land Rover LRX. We initially saw the LRX concept back in 2008 at the Detroit Auto Show. The industry loved it then and demanded it to hit showroom floors. After two years of development, we now know Land Rover listened. If the weird camouflage on this prototype doesn't freak you out enough, wait till you hear this. The car will be offered in all-wheel drive as well as front-wheel drive, and a hybrid version is rumored as well. Under all the crazy colors, we can tell this car looks just as cool as the concept. In fact, it's got a flavor of Bowler Wildcat in it, and we all know how awesome that thing is. Play it. See? It's pretty awesome. That's all I gotta say. Well, that about does it for Fast Lane Daily today. I'm Derek D. It's a hump day, so enjoy all the humping you'd like. Get your minds out of the gutter. Hump day simply means Wednesday. So all I'm saying is enjoy a bunch of Wednesdays and then go have sex. <laughs>